Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Airflow Summit 2022. My name is Ping Zhang, and together with my co-workers from Airbnb, it is a pleasure to welcome you to this block of sessions hosted by Apache Airflow community in the Bay Area. And we are broadcasting from the Airbnb's office, and I would like to take a moment to thank Airbnb for hosting and sponsoring the event. We have some amazing talks today. So stay with us for the next 2.5 hours. And our speaker of the day is Mo Chen Guo, who is also from our team, part of Airbnb. And he will talk about on-demand DAG view REST API. So let's give it up for Mo Chen. Uh, thank you, Ping. Uh, welcome, everyone, to my talk. Um, it's exciting to have a local guest here. Uh, also, hello to people watching online. Um, my name is Mo Chen. I'm a software engineer in Airbnb. Uh, just a little bit about myself. Um, I joined Airbnb uh, more than two years ago. Uh, before that, I was working in the infrastructure team in Facebook. Uh, it's called uh, Meta. Um, so I have been working on Airflow for over a year by now. Um, so I want to first thank the uh, Apache Airflow and the Summit organizer for having this opportunity to share this talk. Also, I want to thank my colleague in Airbnb uh, for the cross-team collaboration uh, to make this talk possible. Uh, so now let me get back to my presentation. Oops. So let me start my PowerPoint. So today I want to talk about the on-demand DAG. Um, this is a uh, issue of the, uh, the API, uh, which we are working on in Airbnb. So a quick look at our content today. Uh, first, I want to put up the use case, which is behind our motivation uh, for this work. Then I want to run a demo uh, in which I will be creating and running a DAG inside the Jupyter Notebook. After the demo, I will explain how that actually works and also the technical implementation details including the API changes we made, also the uh, DAG serialization. So at the end, I will be happy to answer any questions you have. Okay, uh, let me get started. So we know that the Airflow works great as an offline platform. Uh, but here, we want to consider a new use case for Airflow. Uh, basically, we have seen that the data scientists want to experiment and iterate with data uh, based on the result and the analysis. We also seen that the engineers who are building the new data pipelines, they wanted to see how the, you know, either new pipeline or the modified pipeline work in the alpha cluster. So in both cases, they wanted to be able to create, either create or update a DAG and immediately see the result. And so shipping the DAG offline is just too slow for them. So now the question for us is, can we connect them directly to the alpha cluster through the API service? So uh, here is uh, the design um, for such use case. We want to be able to support uh, creating or updating DAG and uh, run those DAGs inside the Jupyter Notebook because uh, Jupyter Notebook is a very popular uh, interactive computing platform. We also want to enhance the REST API to support on-demand DAG. So here, the definition of on-demand DAG, it's a complete DAG that can be created, uh, updated, and deleted through the API. 
right? So we know that the Airflow DAG is written in Python code scripts, right? It also may have the local template files. So a complete DAG means that uh, uh, we need to include everything needed for Airflow cluster to execute it. So once we support on-demand DAG, we are connecting the Jupyter Notebook directly to the API service. So user can uh, create and run uh, on-demand DAGs directly inside the Airflow cluster. And they can check the status on the web UI as usual. So this uh, defines our use case and what we want to do. Next, I'm gonna move to the demo. So um, before I run the demo, uh, I want to explain what operations I'm gonna do. Also, I want to share how this stack is defined. Um, so I will launch a local uh, Jupyter Notebook from my laptop. Uh, this will have the Airflow and the API client installed. I will be creating a DAG object inside the notebook. Then I will issue commands to create the DAG and run the DAG. Then we will check the uh, execution log. So how, um, now this is the, the demo DAG detail. So inside the notebook, we have this DAG object which contains two task objects. Uh, on the left, uh, the task object is called the test custom bash. So this is the object uh, in initialized uh, on the custom bash class defined uh, in custom bash operate.py uh, sitting on my local lab. And uh, this task object uh, is using a bash template called echo.sh. Uh, inside the echo.sh, it will call a user-defined micro function. Uh, it's called uh, data after 10 days. Uh, this one is actually coming from a separate uh, uh, file called uh, util.py, also sitting on my laptop. Uh, the other task, uh, we call it a test Python. This is based on the standard uh, Python operator in Airflow, and it just calls another Python function. It pretty print the arguments. Uh, again, it's also coming from the util.py. So as a complete DAG, we need to send all the information here from my laptop to the remote Airflow cluster. So uh, more details about how this custom batch operator is defined. So you can see in the code, uh, the custom batch operator it extends from the batch operator besides executing the a batch command. We also include the two functions here. Uh, one is the lambda function, the other one is a dynamic function. Both are just uh, printing uh, some dummy uh, numbers. Uh, we just want to verify uh, in the task log how that, if that works. Um, also more about the batch template. Inside the batch template, it's calling the micro function. Uh, called the date after 10 days with the current execution date and print it out. So that's pretty much uh, all the details I want to share for the DAG. So now uh, I, let me uh, run this demo actually, if that works. Uh, so now let me start my Jupyter Net, Jupyter Notebook from my local computer. You guys can see my screen, right? Okay. So here for this demo, I pre-populated the four cells in the notebook already. The first cell is I'm creating the DAG object I just uh, described. It has two tasks. So I'm gonna run this one. So it's getting created. And in the second cell, I'm initializing my Airflow client to talk to my staging service. So I'm gonna run this one. Then in the third cell, 
I'm actually creating this stack inside of the alpha cluster. So it says I have successfully created. Let me click on the link. Hello. Uh, so you can see that uh, this stack is created. Uh, there's no job running yet, right? Uh, has two tasks. Now let's go back. Uh, I want to run the last one, which trigger a job. Cool, so you has created a attack run. And uh, let's click on the job. So it might take a, a minute to run. So I'm gonna just keep refreshing this page. So it's running. Let's give uh, a few seconds. Oops. So we can see that the first one is executed. Uh, sorry, uh, the UI is messed up. So let me click on this one and uh, let's take a look at the log. So you see here the, the basically the Python function is sent from my local laptop to the remote uh, uh, upload cluster and it's uh, printing the expected result. So now let me refresh this one. So the custom bash is also getting executed. So scrolling down, uh, you can see actually, right, it's printing out the, the 10 days uh, after the current date. And also my uh, lambda function and the dynamic function are printing the expected result. So, that's about uh, uh, my live demo. Let me close those windows. Let me share my uh, slides again. So now I want to explain how the create deck and the run deck works uh, in the backend. When we created the deck, uh, what happens inside is that uh, the DAG object is getting serialized a binary blob. And then this binary blob is transported by the API client to the API server. And the API server writes the DAG into three tables in the metadata DB. So this is the DAG model, DAG pickle, and the serialized DAG. So uh, the the whole DAG is stored in the metadata DB. Uh, I will, this is basically just the workflow. I will explain more about the host the serialization and API changes we made here uh, in the technical detail section. Now, uh, DAG run execution. Um, for on-demand DAGs, the execution is very similar to the file-based DAGs. Uh, here, uh, the API can basically send the DAG ID to the uh, DAG run endpoint in the server. And the API service will create the DAG run and the task instance of in the metadata DB, which get picked up by the scheduler and the worker. Uh, the here, the changes we made is that we make sure the scheduler can process on-demand DAGs. And the worker, uh, instead of uh, uh, loading and parsing the DAG file, uh, it will deserialize the DAG from the DAG pickle table. So this is the uh, behind the create DAG and the run DAG. Now I want to move into the technical implementation details. Um, uh, two things I want to cover. One is we're gonna, gonna go briefly about what we made the change, what changes we made to the API. Uh, then we'll focus on the DAG serialization. So for create DAG, we added a new operation called a create DAG on the existing DAG endpoint. This operation, a JSON request. And uh, this JSON request takes uh, the following format. 
it has four properties. The first one is the payload uh, mapped to the binary block and followed by the payload type. Uh, then we have another payload metadata, which can be used to describe the uh, additional metadata in JSON. Uh, the last one is the override Boolean attribute, which should be set to be true if we want to override the existing DAG. So we are trying to make this format to be a generic as much as possible. Uh, also, there's no change on the DAG run and the point. We we'll just use the existing DAG run and the point to trigger a new job. So that's pretty much change we had we had on the uh, API spec. I, I want to focus on the DAG serialization. So uh, basically, uh, this is a summary of what we have done uh, for the DAG serialization. We are using uh, Python's Pico framework to serialize the Airflow DAG. Um, so the Pico can automatically include all the dependencies, Airflow DAG object, including both data and objects. So if you remember my demo, right, I have the custom batch operator. That's a new class only sitting on my local laptop. That we also have for functions like user-defined macros and uh, uh, the Python callable functions. Those are automatically included. There's no extra work we have to implement. The second thing is that uh, the DAG object once it's serialized, it's immutable. So when we deserialize a DAG, there's no more DAG passing. So for the implementation, we are using Pico 5 protocol. This is the Pico protocol in, uh, supported by the Python. We are also using the Cloud Pico, which is an extension library to the Pico, Python's Pico framework. Uh, here, I want to uh, focus on three topics here. Um, the first one is uh, how we use the option to serialize uh, the objects either by reference or by value. The second topic is how we implement the serialization using uh, Pico's customization. The third topic uh, is we want to discuss mutation uh, in Pico framework and the, the workaround we made. Okay. The, for the first one, right, reference versus value. So we know a DAG um, contains a list of tasks. The task may re reference other objects like modules, files, uh, modular classes, functions, or even local files. So we have the option to serialize those objects either by value or by reference. Um, if we do it by value, that means we want to use code or objects in the source environment, for example, in my laptop. Right? For example, the custom batch operator, uh, we have just seen this is serialized by value because it doesn't exist in my Airflow cluster. And the serialized by reference means uh, those objects must exist in the Airflow cluster. Uh, so when deserializing, we are loading them from the Airflow installation. For example, the Python operator uh, we are using we are serialized by reference because it's uh, it's already installed in the Airflow cluster. Now, uh, here's a more concrete example. Let's say I have a simple function called hello, uh, defined in modular M. Uh, if we serialize it by reference, uh, we only need to record the module name and the hello name, that's it. And during the deserialization, it will be loaded from my Airflow cluster right, because it's pre-installed. Uh, but if we serialize by value, uh, we are not depending on uh, installation inside the Airflow cluster. Instead, we need to serialize everything, including this function's bytecode. Uh, so here you see the difference is that uh, uh, serialized by reference reduce the payload size because we don't have to include everything. 
value. So, but the serialized by value is that uh, uh, we want to include my local and send them to the Airflow cluster. So, um, as we have seen, the serialization has an impact on the payload size. Uh, so, in this table, um, I'm showing the a few uh, uh, payload size for a few um, production decks in Airbnb. Uh, when we serialize them, we are using serialized by value except the the Airflow and the Python side packages. Uh, for example, the DAG A, uh, it has almost 16,000 uh, tasks. Raw payload size, the serialization, 16, uh, 15 megabytes, uh, but it dropped to 1.5 megabytes after the compression. So we do want to to control the payload size, we do want to serialize uh, uh, the shell line by reference because they are pre-installed uh, in the Airflow cluster already. Now, uh, moving to the second topic, right, the customization. So Pico Framework, offers a few ways to customize how a Python object is getting serialized. Um, the first approach is that a user can override those magic methods inside the class definition, uh, the reduce get state state. Right. The second approach is that, uh, uh, let's say we don't want to modify the class definition or somehow we cannot modify because we don't know them, we could uh, register a custom reducer uh, uh, per object type in Piclos dispatch table. So I will show a customization uh, in the following slides uh, how we uh, do this for Airflow stack object. The third approach uh, is uh, a custom Piclos class you have to uh, implement this reducer override. So this will uh, basically override the dispatch table at a higher global level. All right, so too much, uh, so much for the theory now. Um, oh, thank you. Hello, hope this one works better. Um, so now uh, I'm showing example how we do the pickle customization. Um, uh, basically here, I'm registering a custom reducer function called a DAG reduce to serialize Airflow DAG object so that uh, I can include those uh, template files automatically. I remember in the demo, I have uh, echo.sh. How did that get included in the DAG? Uh, that's because I have this custom reducer. Um, so this custom reducer must return the interface required by this Pico framework. Uh, this interface basically is a tuple. Um, the first uh, object in the tuple must be a callable to reconstruct the DAG object. Uh, the second object, are the, is the arguments to the first uh, callable. And uh, the third object must be the DAG state. So that means we also have to provide the implementation for the first callable object, right? So, and we are call it DAG reconstruct here. Uh, so uh, I wanted to show you how those two functions are getting implemented here. So first the DAG reduce, this is for serializing the DAG, right? So it accepts a DAG object. And uh, the first thing we do is that we make a copy of the internal state of the DAG object. Then we remove the, the log object because uh, uh, the log can be reinitialized remotely in our full cluster. Then we serialize our local template files into a dictionary. 
and uh, we remove the template search path attribute because it's pointing to my um, uh, directory on my local laptop, which does not make sense for uh, Alpha cluster, which they don't because they don't have that uh, local uh, that path. Uh, the last thing is that we return this uh, uh, reconstruction function uh, and the, the serialized templates as its argument, and also the DAX state back. Then that's it. And uh, now, uh, how we reconstruct this uh, um, DAG during the deserialization? Um, so first thing here is we created the DAG object using the, the magic new uh, constructor. And then we unpack the serialized templates, which is a dictionary, as we have seen in the previous page, to a local DAG tree. Then we set the template search pass attribute to point to this local directory. So this recovers everything. And uh, then we return the DAG object back. And um, what is not shown here is that uh, um, um, the, remember the, the DAG state, it will be restored inside this DAG object uh, automatically by the Pico framework. So we don't have to do anything here. So that's it about my, uh, the customization example. Next, um, this is the last topic about the, the serialization. I want to discuss the no limitations using Pico framework. Uh, the first thing um, is that uh, we can serialize most uh, Python objects, but not all of them. Uh, some typical example is that the uh, log IO objects like DB connections, they are not serializable because they are tied to your local environment. So it, it needs the extra engineer effort to customize the, the serialization to bypass those limitations. Uh, the second limitation is that uh, the Python is bounded to, uh, the Pico is bound to Python, right? It's, uh, you cannot serialize other languages. Uh, so for example, if you have a C library dependency, uh, it cannot be automatically included. So that needs to be pre-installed in your runtime environment. The third limitation, uh, we know that is that uh, the Python version used in serialization and deserialization environment must match. This is due to the weak uh, uh, backward compatibility promise uh, in the Python language. Um, here's an example that uh, some changes in Python 3.8 uh, break the compatibility with 3.7. Uh, so as a workaround in Airbnb, we use the Docker to control the Python versions uh, uh, in both environments. Okay, the last uh, limitation is uh, about the security risks. So here the security risk is coming from that uh, the malicious code could be embedded or injected into the uh, Pico binary. And then when I flow deserialized the DAG, it could execute those malicious code. Um, so here we divide our clients into two, uh, two categories. So for trusted clients, we use the strong authentication like a Kerberos. And we also use TLS to protect the, the transport. For untrusted clients, um, we want to deserialize the, the DAG uh, using a restricted uh, uh, process user so that uh, to block the malicious code execution. Um, there's another way is to uh, use, uh, implement a custom on Pickler to validate the input. So uh, that's pretty much concludes uh, uh, everything I want to talk about. So here is uh, basically a summary. Um, we, so we, we really like having a programmatic API interface for Airflow 
because that opens up new opportunities so that the external services and the tools can be built around the airflow and making airflow more popular. Uh, the second thing is that uh, the online service model uh, helps improve the airflow's usability uh, because now user have a new option uh, to go, uh, go towards the online model, right? They can run, create and run, modify the DAX and run the DAX directly in the Jupyter notebook and they can get uh, feedback instantly. So uh, that, that's all. That's all about my presentation. Thanks for listening. Um,